Hey there ladies and gentlemen, in today's video we are going to take a look at how to create this DNA helix animation inside HitFilm. So to get started, we're going to create a new composite shot and for the duration, I'm going to go with 15 or let's go with 16 and click on OK, 19, 20, 30 FPS, click on OK. I'm going to create a new plane layer and I'm going to call this circle. And this we're gonna create two circles, so this will be circle left. If I can just type in properly, and the color I'm gonna use is red. You can obviously choose any color that you want. I'm gonna click on OK. Then I'm gonna turn this to into a circle by going to the effects and searching for polar warp and applying on this layer. You can also use the ellipse mask tool to create a circle, but I just, I just like to use a polar warp and I can just control the size by decreasing the end radius. I'm going to set this to 50 and there we have a nice circle and then we can just move it to the left so I can just go to transform and change the position so I'll just maybe I'll just set this to negative 550. I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'll just rename this to circle circle right and I'm going to go inside the transform and I'll just hold the control key on the keyboard and click on this number and it will just turn that to positive 550 so now we need to connect these two together so I'll just create a new plane layer or I can just go to media and just drag in this plane layer and put it on the top I'm going to rename this to line and I'm going to go to effects and search for light sword effect it's under generate light sword two point auto a layer only and I'll drag it and apply it on the line layer go to the controls i'm going to expand the light sword effect so if you play this animation you can see that we already have a, this effect is already animated so we don't want any kind of animation on this so first of all we'll just change the blend to none and the distortion we're going to set this to zero then we have the inner glow, we'll set that to 0, stability to 100, flicker to 0. And in the outer glow, we don't want to mess with that, so I'll just go to core. And in the core, we'll just set the feather to feather to 0 and stability to 100. And that's pretty much it. Then we just have to go to hilt and the tip. And we just have to basically connect the hilt to circle right or left. You can choose either one of these and tip. Now we're going to use circle left since we have already selected circle right. And on the position, you have the 300 value set. By default, we want this to be at zero. All right. So now these two, the lines and the li this line is connected with the circle. So if you make changes to uh, your circle so I mean if you change its position you can see the line is going to you know uh, move al along with the circle so now it's connected right that is exactly what we want so I'm gonna what I'm gonna do next is just drag this line there and put it at the bottom so I want the line to be behind the circle and yeah that's pretty much it then we can just animate this so we'll just search for um, position and uh, we don't want to animate the position under polar warp so I'll just toggle that off and I uh, will just want to we just want to animate the position under transform make sure your player head is at the very first frame create a keyframe on position make sure you create it under transform and we just will just move two seconds forward in time so now I'm at two seconds you can check the time right over here and we just want to basically swap the position so it's at 550 the circle right so we just hit, hold the control key and just invert this so now it's at negative 550 uh, this should be at negative 550 we want this to be at 550 so now as you can see we have these two we're basically basically swapping the positions of these two circles and then we go two seconds forward in time so we are at four seconds and just 
copy the first keyframe paste it copy the first keyframe and paste it again select all of these keyframes and convert the keyframes to manual bezier and we just want to repeat this animation for the entire length of our timeline so uh we'll just do that so i'm just going to select these two keyframes hit ctrl c to copy move two second forward in time hit ctrl v to paste so uh, we'll do the same thing over here as well select these two keyframes ctrl c and ctrl v let's check out this animation and yeah and we'll just repeat the process so go two second forward copy these two keyframes ctrl v to paste them copy and paste so we'll just go two second forward in time so now at 14 seconds we'll just copy and paste these keyframes just like that so now we have a nice animation for uh, around 15 or 16 seconds and now we just have to animate the scale keyframes so we'll just expand the layers circle right and circle left go to transform and under position we have scale so we'll just create a keyframe on the very first frame we'll just do this on the first layer and then we'll jump jump to the circle left layer so we'll just go to one second in time and here i want the scale value to be at 150 and if you do this on the other layer as well so if you create a keyframe at the first frame and then go to one second in time we want this value to be at 50. so 150 and 50 you just have to you know change these values so we go to two second and here we want to reset our scale values on both these layers so 100 and 100 and then we go forward so again at three seconds this time and we want to invert this so previously this was 150 now this will be 50 and this one will be 150 so see previously this was 150 and now at three seconds this will be 50 previously this was 50 and now at three seconds this one will be at 150 so you just have to keep this in mind um, to create our animation so the next keyframe will be uh, at 100 so we have to set the values to 100 basically reset the values there you have it and now we can copy these keyframes the these four keyframes Control c and i'm going to move forward to five seconds Control v and again do the same thing just move to nine seconds and Control v and Control V. Do the same thing with this layer as well. Control C. Copy these four keyframes and move 30 frames forward or at 5 seconds. Control V provided that your timeline is 30 frames. Control V and Control V. Alright, so now if we take a look at our animation, you'll see that. It's gonna look as if uh, it's gonna look like it's, it's rotating in 3d environment but it's not we are just creating an illusion and one thing we want to change is if we go to light sword effect uh, we want to change the width so I want this to be around 8 on both hilt and the tip as well so let's just change that to 8 So uh, you can increase the values if you want. So now it's going to look something like that. Right. So now um, we'll just select all these layers. Hit Control M to create a composite shot. And we can just click on OK. Go back to composite shot one. And let's just scale this down. Hold the shift key and just scale this down like that. I'll just move this one over here and I'm going to duplicate this control D hold the shift key and just tap the up arrow key I guess 10 times 
So let's just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Control D and repeat the process. Now you will have an animation that will look something like this. So they are all going to animate at the same time. And by the way, this will be uh, quite a CPU intensive task. So if you want to take a look at the animation, so I'll suggest you to pre-render this or preview this, or you can even load down the call playback quality. So let's just try that. But anyways, uh, what I want to do next is I want to stagger these layers up. So I'll just stagger these layers by 10 frames. So I'll just select the seventh layer and I'll just move it 10 frames forward you can check the time right under your mouse cursor so 7 and 10 and just repeat the process with all these layers so i'm just going to select all of these layers and just drag these forward like that and yeah uh, if you want some more copies you can again select all of these and hit ctrl m create another composite shot go back and we can you know uh, scale this down again and move it down like this um, duplicate and create another copy Um, yeah, one more thing is if you want to You know change the color of the One of these circles you can do that uh, but uh, you just have to Put an extra effort in this because I'll show you If I just apply fill color on one of these layers circle right or circle left go to controls and just set the blend amount 100 and if I just you know scrub through the timeline you'll notice that this right here is okay and uh, when it takes the uh, next turn we'll see that this uh, happening so uh, this animation uh, we don't want the white circle to be visible because it is going behind the red one so it shouldn't be visible so to fix that we have to keyframe the fill color effect so uh, we'll just move a frame where it's not in contact so i'll just create a keyframe over there go to next keyframe hit the period key on the keyboard to jump to the next keyframe and there we, i want the color to be red so i'll just pick this color using the color picker tool move forward keep on moving forward here i would like to create another keyframe so I'll just click on toggle keyframes, which will basically create the same keyframe as the previous one. Go one frame forward and change it back to white. So just basically uh, faking this anima animation. So since this will be real quick, uh, your viewer will not notice this. So you can just, you might just get away with this. I will also turn on motion blur and that might also you know help in blending things properly so right here again it's perfect uh, but when it takes the next turn uh, it's gonna do that thing again so again we'll just copy this keyframe Control C and Control V and we'll just do this again so we'll just play this it's okay right here and here we just have to paste the keyframes and over here as well all right so that's pretty much it if you go back to your main comp and you'll see that everything will be updated properly and uh, one more thing is that uh, if you 
like this uh, I mean this is uh, all right you don't have to do anything but maybe we should just you know go to transform and on the scale we'll just unlink this and I'll just want to flip it so flip it uh, horizontally so I can just hold the control key and just click on this number on the right one and we'll turn that to negative value I can see now you have all these uh, white circles in one curve and the red ones are in there uh, in one curve so if, it, if that's what you're looking for you can do that but that's just completely up to you um, so uh, that's it uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, as much as I enjoyed making it if this video was helpful don't forget to leave a like and also subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one